Welcome to another mentoring moment with Dr. Mo. I'm Dr. Mo, and in this mentoring moment, we will elevate and enhance your tapping practice by taking a deep dive into why you should be using PC6 in your sessions. And so PC6 is also known as pericardium 6, but in EFT, this point is referred to as the wrist point. And now PC6, as I will be referring to the wrist point in this video, is considered an extra point. It's not in the basic recipe, but that doesn't mean it's any less powerful or beneficial for the clients that you see. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to understand and be a bit more comfortable when and how to use PC6 with your clients because every point has a spiritual component to it, every point has an emotional component, and every point has a physical component to it. So in this video, you'll be able to understand all three of those dimensions that really make up the personality of this point. So let's first start with how to find PC6. So PC6 is located on the pericardium channel in Chinese medicine, and as you will um, see in this video, I'm going to show you the trajectory of the pericardium channel, but it mainly starts in the chest and travels down into the arm, right down the center of the arm into the middle finger. So PC6 is located about three finger widths above the wrist and it's right dead in the center. It's actually on that same trajectory as the median nerve. And if anyone has ever had carpal tunnel, they know how, how powerful the median nerve can be. And so sometimes when you stimulate this point, either through acupressure or through acupuncture, you might feel some nervy sensations, some tingling down into your hand and fingertips. And also it might go up into your elbow. So those are just some little disclaimers about using PC6. Of course, go to your comfort and don't make yourself uncomfortable um, just to get a good stimulation from this point. It's always working. As long as your intention is there, it is working. And so as I mentioned before, pericardium 6 or PC6 belongs to the pericardium meridian or channel. And meridians are really interesting because they are known as propagation of sensation lines, according to Dr. Robert Kendall. And in his re research, he has stated that meridians represent pathways of nerve sensation that is elicited from the stimulation of an acupoint. So it's important to understand that when you stimulate PC6 or you stimulate any acupoint in the basic recipe or any extra point for that matter, you're actually stimulating the meridian also. So you're kind of getting like a double whammy. You're stimulating the point, getting all of the beautiful emotional, physical, spiritual um, benefits from that point, but you're also generating the energy of the meridian from which that point belongs to. And so I just wanted to share some interesting research that was done in the 90s regarding the the meridians and the truth behind meridians because sometimes people can doubt like oh i don't i don't believe that there are meridians there it's just a bunch of hoopla but actually you know based on what dr robert kendall said they're propagation of sensation lines they map sensory and a sensory experience and so two french researchers took this a step further and they injected a radioactive substance called technetium into acupoints and non-acupoints. And they noticed that the radioactive substance didn't do much at non-acupoints, meaning that at non-acupoints, it's not a true acupoint, so it's not located on a meridian. So that uh, radioactive substance just stayed still and just did circles. But when they note, when they uh, were looking at the radioactive substance behavior at acupoints, they saw that that radioactive substance actually traveled. And it traveled along the exact pathways as the acupuncture meridians. So if these French researchers were to have done that same experiment and injected that technetium into PC6, what do you think they would have found? 
Well, this is what the primary channel of the pericardium looks like. This is what its trajectory is according to ancient Chinese literature. So it originates in the chest and has a branch that goes down into the stomach area. And it crosses the pectoral region, the chest, and goes right, uh, right along the armpit and then travels down the center of the arm all the way down the center of the wrist into the palm of the hand and terminates at the end of the middle finger. And so this is the primary channel of the pericardium. In Chinese medicine, there are different types of channels, and I'm going to be showing you the trajectory of the pericardium in different um, in those different channels because I just want you to be able to see the commonalities of the trajectory of the pericardium. So this is the primary channel. So just remember it starts in the heart, there's a branch that goes down into the stomach, which will be, will be important later. It crosses the chest, as you can see here, um, traverses the axilla or the armpit area, then goes down the arm and ends in the finger, the middle finger. Okay, so that's just the primary channel, but let's look at other manifestations of the PC channel. One other type of channel is called a Luo channel. This is not important for you to remember, but I just want you to kind of see the commonalities, the common themes in pericardium. And so here we are again. It, this low channel actually begins at pericardium 6, the point that we are discussing, and it goes up the middle of the arm, crosses the armpit area, and terminates in the heart, right? So common themes from this from the previous um, slide here we have the arm and we have the heart right this is some um, trajectory over the arm the chest and the heart and then again another variation of the pc channel is known as a sinew channel so it's more muscular it's it's taking into consideration the muscles um, along this channel and so as you can see it's kind of the same trajectory here on the left the picture on the left uh, we have the diaphragm actually included diaphragm is part of the chest then it it's uh, traversing over the pecs the pectoral muscles going down the bicep down to the elbow and then going all the way down again into the fingertips and then the last um, variation of a PC channel is known as the divergent channel. Once again, these names are not important, but I just want you to kind of see the commonality in the how the pericardium traverses over the body. And so in this divergent channel, which is the picture on your right, it crosses the chest, it goes down into through the center of the body, into the stomach, into kind of the lower area, but there's also a branch that goes up into the ear as well. Okay, so overall, as we kind of look at these pictures, what are the common themes? Well, we have the chest, we have the arm, we have the heart, and we also have, you know, some branches that go down to the center of the body. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I want to discuss what are some physical effects when you apply acupuncture with needles on PC6, according to the research. So according to the research, when you stimulate acupuncture, when you, excuse me, when you stimulate PC6 using acupuncture, it's very good for reducing nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting that is due to post-op, post-op nausea and vomiting, but also there's a condition that pregnant women may experience during their pregnancy that is called hyperemesis gravidarum or hg for short and it's just severe nausea and vomiting um, throughout the pregnancy or just during a small uh, portion of the pregnancy but it's very unbearable but pc6 is known to be effective on that and that kind of makes sense right because we saw in these pictures that there are branches of the PC6 right here that go into the stomach. They go down into um, the center of the body where the stomach is, where you can expect that nausea to be coming from, okay? So nausea and vomiting is one. 
also benefits cardiac function like heart rate, blood flow, and vasculature, uh, regulates serum and or myocardial metabolites. So all this is kind of saying is that it benefits the heart, it benefits amino acids, carbohydrates, lipids, blood, anything to do with vasculature and the heart, which makes sense. Oh, also sodium channels in the heart right here. And this makes sense because in the trajectory of the PC channel, we saw that it always is protecting the heart. It's always related to the heart as we saw here. Okay. And one last uh, benefit that I noted in my research is that it benefits the lungs, right? Benefits the lungs after a lobectomy, and it's it may be related to improvement of oxidative stress. So this kind of also makes sense because in the pictures here of the, where the channel traverses, it crosses the lungs, right? It crosses the chest where the lungs are located. So that's pretty cool to see how the physical effects kind of overlay onto the the trajectory of that channel and where that channel crosses over the body. So this is just on acupuncture, but what about acupressure, which is a lot more relevant to us because that's what we will be using when we do our sessions. So the research on acupressure of PC6 is actually not as rich as acupuncture, but that's okay. Um, the research just hasn't devoted um, you know, time and money to this particular subject, but hey, there's always time, right? But in the research that I was able to find, acupressure PC6 is very beneficial for, again, nausea and vomiting for pregnant women with that severe form of, of nausea and vomiting in their pregnancy. It's also very good for post-op nausea and vomiting and also anxiety. So a lot of people, when they experience anxiety, where do they feel it? They feel it in their chest. They feel a constriction in their chest or they feel their heart palpitating, beating faster skipping a beat. So this is why um, PC6 might be helpful for anxiety because as we saw, the channel crosses into the heart and it's known as the heart protector. And also acupressure PC6 can be known to benefit cardiac rhythm, which again makes sense based on what we've said previously. So now I want to take some time to go over a page out of my book, The Basic Recipe Unpacked, and kind of dive a little deeper into the emotional and physical implications of this point.